You are now listening to Broken Line Podcast, presented by Fish Addictions TV. Broken Line Podcast is sponsored by Ice Strong Titanium Spring Bobber, Eskimo Ice Fishing Gear, 13 Fishing, Striker Ice, Coles Resort of Bemidji, Minnesota, Aaron Eichhorst Photography. Yep, yep. All right, so Let's we're back on. for another podcast with Will Pappin Foos. While I Will. Mr. While I Will, the player. How did you uh-huh. get While I Will for for one thing? How does that uh, come about? You know what? It actually started in eighth grade. Whoa. I'm keeping the, stuff uh, from your childhood, I see. The old uh, junior high baseball team. Really? Baseball? Uh, what? Uh, I know. What position? Uh, first base. Actually, nice. Most of the time. Nice. And I actually pitched one game, but I did so terrible I never pitched again after that. <laughs> so what did while I will come into that? Yeah, how does that intermingle well, with baseball? They uh one of my buddies was all giving us nicknames. And uh one of them was like Sunfish for some we were just naming fish reasons cuz we like to fish and stuff and they're like, "Oh, but while I will." I'm like, Sure, let's do that. And then so, boys and girls, it has nothing to do with anything professionalized. It's no. just a baseball nickname. No, that's kind of how it started. You know, I love the fish walleyes, and they're like, oh, yeah, you need that. I'm like, okay. And then, you know, that's basically how it started from there. Yeah, because you even got a lower third in a Fish Addictions episode that said, while I will, like, a guide service or some professionalism name. Which, thank you for not putting my patches in. Oh, patches of hula hand. Yeah. Patches. I got that in college because I was the old grumpy guy that knew everything. And I was always <laughs> cranky, just like uh, Patches of Hulahan. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we did. Um, we we already. This is our second attempt at doing this podcast because two minutes ago the computer just froze. But we're back, back at it. That might be a sign. I think it was the Russians. The, let's check social media. Might be <laughs> on there real quick. Oh, I'm sure there'll be a critique about it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so who is Will? While I will. Who are you? Where'd you grow up? Give us a little bit on on who Dude, you are. This is your perfect time to do one of those cool wrestling intros. Yeah. From parts unknown. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just uh just a kid from uh I live or I grew up just west of Buckman, Minnesota, which is kinda in between Piers and Royalton almost. Yep. It's so, like I live 15 minutes from Piers, and I live 15 minutes from Royalton. Wait a second. I, I know exactly where you're talking about, and I have to apologize. Because I'm, like, cruising on 10, like, here we are in lovely Buckman, and we're out of it. Yeah. Like, when, when you're who on, lives here? Why is it, there a green sign that says when, Buckman here? When you're on Highway 10, there's a sign that says Buckman 11 miles. I never saw the 11 miles, so, I, okay, I take it back. <laughs> 25 goes right through Buckman. Okay. Was it one of those situations when you were uh, taking like a school field trip where you, you took it to the Royalton Treasure Treasure Place? No, nope, never been there actually. What? I've driven by it about a million times. How do you grow up 15 minutes from it and you've never been in there? I've, driven, I've been in the junk. parking lot. I've never been in it. Treasure City? Fireworks? Junk? Mom Gatorheads? Never, Mom would never let me Can you just imagine if that place burned up? There's just, just shit everywhere. You know, just, <laughs> it's everywhere. They even, like, have it Dude. overflowing outside. Yeah. And you've never been there, not no. even, like, a field trip. I've well, I, I, not that I remember, I haven't been in there. Dude, I've been to, like, Disney World. I've been to NASA. And I've, I've been, been to, to Treasure City. City. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, it's the only place where if you're low on gator heads and plastic Jesuses, that's the stop, dude. That's the stop. <laughs> You're going to Minneapolis. You're like, well, we gotta get our treasure on. You know, you gotta go Pack in there. Of black hat fireworks. You got dust you're weaving through to get through the, <laughs> <laughs> the buildings. The There's a lot of stuff up in there. But yeah, okay. So you grew up there. Who? I mean, tell us a little bit about who you are, how old you are. You got in the fishing industry. You go to college. The whole works. All right. Well, I'm 21 years old. <sighs> Legal drinking age. Yep. Finally. Finally. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I've been going to Bemidji. This is I'm senior. I'm a senior at Bemidji now, and basically got into the fishing industry when I think it was sophomore year. I want to say is when uh, Clam Outdoors actually gave me a chance. And when I came up here, you know, I met a lot of people. I knew a couple of people around here, 
I kind of was just like, I'd watch, you know, you watch L. Linder, Jason Mitchell, all these guys on TV, and it's like, growing up, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make it to be on TV, and that's I thought that was like the coolest it's thing a ever. Cool shot, yeah. Cool guy around the on the block. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no, no. No, hey, I wasn't dude, the you coolest can say cat. from your town you made it, right? Yeah, sure. How well, what's the si- size population of your town? Uh, I want to say maybe 2000 or so no, in Pierce. That's what I thought. And like 210, 300 in Buckman. Okay, time out. We're going to drop the whole while I will thing. Now that Will's on TV, when he goes back, he, he's now Will Powers. Will Powers. Get it, Kenny Powers? Yeah. Mr. Big Time. Mr. Big Time. <laughs> Will Powers. You um uh what what year were you when you graduated high school cuz I'm still trying to wrap my head around a senior 21. 2014. So I was no, I was you? 17 when I graduated. That's why. I was wow. 17 when I started freshman year. So your uh, your age is Apologize for your mom and dad. You you should I mean you should have. Yeah. Cuz you had the late 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 of everything. <clears throat> So what is your birthday like? December twenty sixth or something? No, August twenty fifth. Oh, August. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I'm thinking senior in college, twenty one years old. I'm like, my head wasn't quite wrapping around mm-hmm. that, a hundred percent. But you, uh, you kind of like big fish, right? I mean, that's who that's like you. Fish. Who doesn't like yeah, big doesn't? fish? Uh, walleyes, bluegills, etc. Talk to me about your love for bluegills, though, because I that's what I it's, seem to uh, see the most with you. If anybody who's ever fished with me knows that I could probably I act like a four year old girl four-year-old when I'm catching girl. blue bluegills. If I catch a big one, I'm doing the worm on the ice. I'm dancing. I'm super excited, and it just it gets me. You told me one time that you're like, I don't like fishing by myself when I catch big fish because there's no one to celebrate with. Yeah, there's exactly. no one to hear you scream like a little girl. Exactly. <clears throat> I hear you, man. I'm the same way when it comes to those big bluegills, like. All right, let's just drop what we're doing at Fish Bay Bluegills. You know, there's this. Is it just trying to outsmart those things? Uh, sometimes it is because they can be very, very, very finicky. Because the other night we were out fishing. It's like a test of wills, like who's going to break first. Yeah. I and mean, yeah. we were out the other night and we caught a bunch of small ones on this one lake and we caught a couple decent ones, but we had so many come in that would just chase, 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 and then gone. And it can be so frustrating sometimes. But we just left, went to another lake, and they were absolutely just firing. I mean, little ones, big ones, everything. And then I had one big lion come on the screen. I bet you I worked him for about two or three minutes. And all of a sudden, he finally just smoked it. And it was just shy of 11 inches. Those big blue guys were tested, yeah. man. Freight Freight train. Train. It was actually almost as big as a KFC buffet. I was looking at that. We'll get Almost to that. that we'll get to that. It was the twenty what? piece bucket, Mark. <laughs> yeah, bucket. What's the? What's your? Don't. This is a non-line situation here. No line. Tell me your secrets for catching those big things. Everyone sees your social media posts and they're like, uh, "Yeah, I want that." Oh, I think I know. It's uh, it's actually being subtle with your baits. Just take a lot. It. Exactly. Just tickle it. Barely move it. A lot of people they're. They jig, 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 and then all of a sudden they disappear. So you're trying to keep your jigs in a little bit more of a slow yep. cadence than A lot the of times heavier. those bigger fish, they just, <clears throat> they'll stare at it, and if you just barely tickle it, just barely tickle they'll it. go for it. And you're looking at, on average, they're using plastics, or is everything mostly, changes? Mostly just wax worms. Wax worms is your If favorite. I'm fishing crappies, I'll throw plastics. Yeah. Gills, mostly I'm going wax worms. You're throwing meat on. And your cabbage, weeds. Usually, kind of structure, usually, a lot of times it's either right on the weed line and like 12 feet. So that where they can kind of come feet. out and see your bait. Other times it's about 15, 18, just off of the weed lines. It kind of depends what lake you're on. And a lot time of times of day, too. Yeah. A yeah. lot of times they'll be out deep, depending on how deep the lake is or how the basin's set up. But most of the times if you find green weeds, sit right on the edge of them in the mornings, evenings, even sometimes during the day, they're going to be there. Yeah. You wanted to talk to them about the school thing because I don't want to leave the who you are without coming back. Yeah, why BSU? That. Why Bemidji State University? What drew you to that campus? My uh, my older cousin actually was the first one of the ones in my family to go there. Yeah. And I actually came up here a year before I decided where I wanted to go. And just seeing all the lakes and everything <laughs> and the fish that are up here, I was like, 
It's the no brainer. So for me. the outdoors. Yeah. The outdoors. It was the finisher. Like I yeah. need to. I need to come to right. this school. Right. Mm-hmm. What's your major? Business administration, Ooh. with a marketing emphasis. Nice. The marketing nice. emphasis. Yeah, that's a. I spent a lot of time at Bridgman Hall. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, that seems to be the the one hall where a lot of the the outdoor guys are. You know, where the where those majors are, but these guys are heavy into the outdoors. A lot of bow hunters. Musky fishermen, that type of stuff, and mm-hmm. it's almost like some of them are going through the motion just because they want to fish here and not mm-hmm. here. <laughs> I think one of the biggest selling points of Bemidji, which we've talked about multiple times, at least for Bemidji State, is the fact that you can throw a penny in this town and hit someone in the outdoor industry. I mean, there's lakes mm-hmm. everywhere. There's outdoor stuff to do for conservation. Yeah, uh, how many schools can you go to where you can park on the ice and and go to school or? You know, that's yeah. it's locker so guns many. in the dorms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, locker. You know, yep. gun uh, gun lockers inside. You know, the school mm-hmm. is, and they have a fish cleaning table and everything. Yep. Just clean your fish there, throw the guts in one of the garbage bags, and you put them in the freezer, and they take them out in the mornings. I mean, they they. I think what would be super cool is if we really transformed Bemidji State into the ultimate outdoor college. I mean. And that, that there's a fine line of you know crossing that where obviously they're there for education and school and they don't want to lose certain people blah 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 but could you imagine if they continued their you got the gun lockers now you got you got the fish mm-hmm. cleaning thing if they really made Bemidji State just like that ultimate outdoor hub college with of course the education mm-hmm. along with it but right. making it. Because like, this city should be based around the outdoors, log cabins. Yeah, you would, have, you would think that Bemidji State have, would have a, a shooting team, mm-hmm. trap shoot, you know, um, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, you would think they would. You'd think after having the the Bassmaster College National Championship here, that seeing you know, all these people that were interested, and Bassmaster said that it was one of the highest attending national championships that they've ever had. Yeah, for so the crowd-wise, right? Yeah. So you yeah, think that people would see that and want to come? You know? I mean, I, I think if you're anywhere in the state of Minnesota and you're looking to go to college and you're looking for somewhere that's just pure outdoors, I mean, you can go fishing, hunting, mm-hmm. canoeing, do a little bit of everything. Your college's born into it or is kind of built around it in a sense. And you're right on Lake Bemidji and got all this mm-hmm. up here. I mean, you think this is where you would want to go. I'm sure yeah. in the Montana there's other colleges that are – you know, Similar. killing it in the outdoors as well if they're based in it. Mm-hmm. But for Minnesota, I feel like this is the state college that has it, has it right there. Mm-hmm. And that seems like one of the reasons why you kind of picked that. And that's not the only person that I've talked to. Multiple people kind of, that was mm-hmm. their trigger. That's how they pulled it. They were like, yep, um, I want to go to school here. Not only for this, but because of this situation, you know. Mm-hmm. But I th- you would think we would have a, do we have a good, conservation program or like biology by there is a lot of people in the in yeah. like aquatic species and conservation well, and stuff the like northland that. tackle um what's their uh, impulse that whole scent and plastic line was developed in conjunction with the bsu biology department hmm. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. interesting did not know that that's yep. cool yep Northland went to that's them. another thing. Yeah, having Northland tackle right in Bemidji. I mean, that just seems like Northland. Northland should be attaching themselves to the BSU and mm-hmm. everything they possibly can, especially in that that realms in that department. I mm-hmm. guess. Oh, I had many talks with those guys. I was looking for a CAD design job out of college. I, hey, so and so, you know, this is what I can do. You know, I'm right here in town. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do a lot of that stuff um, up on. Uh, up by International Falls. Huh. So, well, I can move, but that was the end of it. <laughs> I'll okay. travel if you want. I can travel. But, uh, but yeah, you didn't know that, huh? Uh-uh. Yeah. No, that's that's interesting because mm-hmm. I would think with Bemidji State there would be multiple things like that. I yeah. just didn't know anything about. I mean, that's it's cool for sure. You would just think that there would be more of it. Mm-hmm. Like this, what was it? Just past year they added the firearms locker. Was that? No, that was there when I got there freshman year. Oh yeah, it's been there for a while. Well, what was this? Did they redo it? It was just in the newspaper. I'm not a hundred. Maybe they sure. might have redone it. I think it. they redid it. Then. Yeah, it was just in the paper. Like yeah, this it's past been year. here for a long time. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's a cool thing. Most people are like, most campuses are keep your guns away. Yeah. They're like, yeah, bring them on in. We'll throw them in a locker yeah. for you. Keep them guns all nice bows. and safe. It's weird. Nobody's gotten shot or nothing yet. Hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> that ah, must be weird. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a subject that we hit on the last podcast, and that was bashing photos on social media. And just so happens, after we talked, did that podcast. I got nervous. I was mad. Yeah, he was he was frustrated. He was working his hands like this, but it just so <laughs> happens that after that podcast, we now have you in the studio, and we talked about you as one of the examples. So, I want to hear from your point of view as the person that got bashed because we talked about that kid, you know that that so Northern yeah. deal, and Did we talked about you. Yeah, he yeah he knows about the mm-hmm. that yeah, kid deal. That was brutal. Yeah. Um, so I've, just having it from your perspective of someone that was being bashed, we talked about the Northland page, the two bluegills. So I want to hear it coming from you on what it, how do, does it bring you down? You know, what, what is it like to take a bashing on social media? But also there were some positive stuff coming mm-hmm. your way, but what is it like to take a, a negative, uh, blow on social media for fish photos on social media? Well, this is the way you got to look at it. You know, I'm out fishing, you know, catch a decent fish, take a decent picture, you know, put it up. And the people that are bashing are a lot of the people that are sitting in their beanbag chair eating Cheetos and seeing this and thinking, there's no way. There's no way this guy caught this. Oh, that's fake. You're not fooling anybody, you know. And you just kind of, you just got to laugh. That's basically all you can do is laugh at it, you know. And and I got to, I got to hand it to you. I mean, the way you... Um, handle that stuff online is instead of commenting on it up. in a negative. Yeah, I mean, if you're just it's, you're just going to make yourself look bad if you say anything yeah. bad. So you basically just got to turn it around and just laugh with them. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. It's fake. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I posted I, it for. Fake I ones. bought it Photoshop and I bought you know DSLR camera with a wide lens with my college you know money and that's what i did you know that's exactly what i did right (laughs) and who's getting an award for this yeah i don't think anyone is i mean but yeah i mean when you when you just when you hear it from someone who's kind of had it i guess that is a cool way i mean you're an adult Mm -hmm. so you're gonna take it and like well i guess i'll just laugh about it and join in and not say anything back because if you say something back it's going to trigger someone to say something back and then it's going to be a whole drama Mm -hmm. war and i'm sure this is coming from someone who probably fishes 80% less than you. Mm-hmm. I, I highly doubt they're on the lake as much as you. You're mm-hmm. on the lake a lot. And you catch a lot of big bluegills. So it, it is what it is. But it is funny how it's always a keyboard guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Look at you. You know, you're. Yeah. It's fake. <laughs> like, I don't even fish, but ah, it's fake. You know, yeah. like one of those. We actually got gotta, a message gotta the keep other it, day. Got to keep it, uh, you know. Got to keep it justified. Got to make sure that this is correct. That this yeah. is correct. Mm-hmm. Whatever. There's always people out there that are going to be <clears throat> negative. Yeah, there's always people going to bring you down, but you just right. got to just ignore it and keep on. Keep and it you on. know as well as I do, anybody else who sees that picture, I mean, you didn't, you didn't, there wasn't any dimensions or weights or anything mm-hmm. like that, but I could tell by looking at those bluegills because that's what I looked at mm-hmm. the bluegills. I was like, those are giants. Look at the ear flap that they call, you know, the mm-hmm. black thing. Big lump on its forehead. Like, yeah, that's a that's a true pig. Mm-hmm. It's a giant fish. Speaking of giant fish, did you see Andy Fiocas? Yeah, that thing was Dude, insane. he had a 35-inch walleye. I, I that's think insane. I saw it. You were looking at it yesterday? Yeah, 17 before, pounds. You were? Someone was looking at it on their phone on Facebook. Which he, <laughs> he deals with a lot of the same crap, too, oh, when he yeah. catches those giant, giant perch. And well, when he caught this walleye, net, not only did he have still videos or still shots, he had video. Oh yeah, to like video and always people still, man. takes it a little bit more to that yeah. next secure spot. Yeah. It's almost worth it if you take big bluegills like that to have someone, whoever took the photo, mm-hmm. flick it in the video and get a couple three. It's like why do you even have to do that? But yeah. you know, walk around you a little bit just to prove I got video, bud. Like here yeah, you, go. you know, I, I said it yesterday too, like. A person shouldn't have to go through all of this BS just to just to worry about what they're going to say online. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, who cares? Yeah. If you want to post it, post but it. But you're always going to get negative people. We just got. I just got a message uh, yesterday. A guy said, um, "I think it was after what." It actually wasn't yesterday. It was after we watched the um, the episode, the behind the scenes episode mm-hmm. for Fish Addictions TV. Guy snapchats snapchats me and says, I can outfish you guys. 
anytime, any place. Big, big crappie, slab crappies, big perch. And all I'm thinking is, and I, hey, if he listens to this, then he listens to this. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, and he was just like, he had a bunch of kind of gibberish in there too. And I said, I don't quite understand exactly what you're saying. <laughs> and then he got like nice. Yeah. Like that was the first time he was ever reaching out. And I think he was, he didn't know I was going to be nice. So it was just like, <laughs> Uh, you know and then i wanted to say i'm like uh last year we were on the ice 89 days on the road shows mm-hmm. the whole works and i'm like so you're saying you can outfish us here's a ribbon mm-hmm. Here you uh, go. Here's- that's not what it's about we're on the road for eight you know 89 90 days whatever it is and we are on schedules and deadlines mm-hmm. and we're going 12 hours here, 14 hours here, and we're trying to come up with storyline shows Dude. and try to figure it out. We're not going out there for yeah. to outcome, so I'm better out than fish you, someone. You, know. That's not you, know, you could about. sum all that up with one statement. What channel is your show on? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then silence. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Internet silence. There's a lot of those people that will just get at you and they'll say something. You actually t- talk to them and they're like, oh, oh, you know, they'll just be Go all back. cool. And it's like, why? Yeah. I just mean, what I did is pull I pull your was, fingers away from the keyboard. Just pull them away. It's not just worth it. get, get re- away from the internet. Go out and fish. Yeah, go out and fish. Go put some peanut butter on your jelly sandwich. Okay, just <laughs> just be easy. Now. I responded to him nicely, and next thing you know, all of his things were yep. nice. Well, and then he was inviting us to come fish with him mm-hmm. and all it's this all stuff. Goes. And I'm sitting there like, okay. And that wasn't the first person that's ever messaged no. us for the first time on Snapchat. Said something, and then we respond, and all of a sudden they're like inviting us to come fish with them and it's like i think they were oh we're big shots and they messaged us thinking we're just gonna blow it off not knowing how we're gonna Mm. react but really they were wanting to be nice and talk to us because maybe they did want to invite us to fish or something (laughs) and then once we responded like oh yeah hey how's it going buddy Uh, we're friends now uh, what do you uh what do you prefer ice fishing or open water and why uh i really like open water Ooh. Just because I can be it's, We haven't had too many open waters over ice fishing so if far I could this year. if I could choose, it'd be fifty to sixty five degrees every day. No wind. Five or a little to, wind. No, a little five, wind. Yeah. Little, little wind. wind. You gotta have that chat. North chop. northwest wind every day. It'd be the greatest thing ever. Five to ten. Five, five to ten, yeah. There, somewhere in there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> if only you could control the weather. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't don't did Not tonight. See, we did the gopher look. You see that gopher? <laughs> we oh. both were like, <laughs> oh, man. You got to watch why the don't, Why don't you either. call your buddies and, and put in that order for Will? Yeah. <laughs> I'll call up Alaska right now. We'll, we'll get <laughs> the weather some, machine is. We'll get, some, <laughs> we'll get the exact weather you want. This weather, this winter has been pretty brutal. So yeah, I don't know. Cold. The whole people thinking that there's a... Uh, the whole weather deal. I mean, it's been pretty cold. Yeah. It's I been ridiculous. Know, it's not even fun anymore. Mm-hmm. No. You can now fish. they supposedly I'm just thinking about it and I yeah. hate it. Well, it's warmer outside right now. And it's it's seven twelve at night right now. Mm-hmm. And it was and it, it's warmer now than it was when? Three hours ago. Three hours. Yeah. I mean you can fish in a like an ice castle or a glacier or anything like that. And forty below but you're going to have tanks freeze up, you're going to have lines freeze up, and then you're basically screwed so you have no heat. Yeah, things break when it gets this it's, cold, man. Yeah. It doesn't matter what Augers it is. break, rods break, everything breaks. I just it's saw an ice fishing in Minnesota. Someone stole propane tanks on the lax, the big, tall resort ones. Hmm. I wonder like, what they're going to use those for. <laughs> <laughs> Some bombs or something? No. <laughs> no. We'll talk <laughs> about it later. <laughs> talk about that later. Yeah. Well, what's your favorite? What's your favorite kind of fish, and why? And yeah, and I think favorite and least favorite. Favorite for open water or ice fishing. Let's do both. Let's so break it fishing, down a little bit. Ice fishing, my favorite would be bluegills. Obviously, that's not obvious. There's been some people that have tricked us, where it's like, well, obviously, and they're like, well, hold yeah. up. They are though. They're just just chasing them and the tug and just holding them in your hands. It's just like they're just gorgeous. You so can't. I'm guessing your open water is not bluegills, by the way you described. No. So w- before you say what your favorite open water is, why do you not like them for both? 
I mean, and obviously, be, I don't know. It, well, I, you could be musky because, or Will, something. Will, like. Will, I think Will's the type of dude if if he's out open water fishing for walleyes or something or whatnot, and he comes across a pod of giant gills. Well, by God, I think we're going to stop oh, walleye fishing for a second oh, yeah. here. Is walleye the open water? Yep. Walleye will. Duh. Just because you can cover so much water and you can. It, my favorite is going and finding new spots. Because if you find it, you learn so much more. And it's like if you go to a new spot and you start whacking them, it's just it's the greatest feeling in the world. It feels like you've accomplished something. You, know? but you, you crushed a tanker in Lake of the Woods this year. I did. With Andrew. And, I mean, still, as you're pulling that big fish out of the hole, is there a realms of difference between open water and a boat besides 65, 5, mile, five 10 mile an hour winds, calm type deal? I mean, there is when you pull a... A 27 inch out of ice hole it's you know it, they're a little more lethargic in the winter you know especially with the time we were up there middle of january so that's i mean it's a great accomplishment but i just the thing about open water is when you can cover so much water and they're so aggressive especially in the spring right after spawn because they're hungry and they're trying to you know put their weight back on when you can catch a fish almost every cast sometimes it's like I can't get enough of it. Right. I hear you. Where's I'm just, f- like, smiling like a, you know, grin ear to ear. Yeah. You seem to be a, you, you seem to be a little bit more open to all kinds of species to mm-hmm. the ice, though. I mean, uh, you, you go bourbon fishing. Yeah, I was at Eel Pope. You know, you like to get on big perch. schools of giant perch. Mm-hmm. You do the crappies. The, you know, obviously, mm-hmm. we just talked about bluegills. You know, so it seems like a little – it's a little bit more fun to chase some multiple mm-hmm. different species in the winter, kind of break it up. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what I've gotten into lately, too, because I used to just straight up panfish. And now it's like... There's something about a really good panfish bite, though. Mm-hmm, that's yeah. just... Can't I'd, go wrong. Mm-hmm. You it, know? Uh, there's a rival. A really good burbot bite. Oh, you kind of well. forget about burbots, it. Burbots. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Oh, you kind of yeah. forget about I've everything else. Bur- burbot's like one of those fish that it's not... A top five fished fish in you know Minnesota. It's the X Games it's, of ice fishing. It comes around one one mm-hmm. time of the winter. That's it. Yeah, it's a, it's a different it's a different kind of fish. It's you like trout it. fishing. You know, some of the trout people would be like, "Oh yeah, I go trout fishing." Those are the like, guys that fooled us. Those greasy trout fishermen. Those greasy yeah. trout fishermen. They're chasing <laughs> grease. Grease. <laughs> oh, what do you seven. mean by grease when you say grease? Well, okay. Here's the deal. Um, Grease means multiple things. This is what I've learned. Yeah. Okay, it's a good thing. It could be a bad thing. It's kind of like the F word. You know, it could be like, whoa. You know, I'm not going to say it now, but mm-hmm. like, you would be like, dude, you're that's greasy. greasy. And then you're like, yeah, man, thanks. Or man, that was really greasy. Like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Those were pretty you know, similar. It all, it's all in the mm-hmm. in the tone, in the way you say it. But that dude, is one of the pile nickname. of grease, dude. <laughs> that's one of the nicknames for uh, that I've heard for lake trout because trout are greasy fish. Their meat is greasy or oily. So, like, yeah, I'm gonna go chase some grease, or I'm gonna go to the bathroom and put out some grease. But that's my daughter, though. That's her little thing <laughs> that's for number her, two. Um, going to let some grease out. And then I just started calling walleyes greasy because they're always just like laying on the bottom like a slimy piece of bacon, mm. waiting to be flipped. Do you li- have you ever lipped a walleye? Uh, this guy's done it like two or three times in the last year. I mean, if I wasn't smart, sometimes then maybe I have. But no, he does it on purpose. He's like, you just gotta. You gotta if you have a smaller the- one, you can. Oh no. But I'm not. Ones. I've lived no, in Rainier River, River ones. That's right. I think actually, actually the, the, the bigger ones, it's point. easier. You can get your thumb in between those big chompers. Hmm. No problem. Just hold I'll up. show you. Yeah, we'll go up to Rainier. Hmm. Okay. Teach you we'll, go on a lip, we'll, we'll go on a lip holding <laughs> session. <laughs> lip holding school. This week on, you know, Broken Line Podcast, we're teaching you how to lip a walleye. There's <laughs> lots of techniques. Here's people. how you lots do it. You don't. You don't. You don't. Do <laughs> what do you? Uh, wh- what's your favorite body of water to fish? Are you like river systems? Are you I like, like lakes? Leech and Mille Lacs would probably be my favorite. And that's for open water yep. or for both? Uh, open water. Open water. What do you like for ice fishing? Well, it depends what we're going for. Well, Usually, uh, like, we're talking about your favorite bluegills. Oh, that's the uh, undisclosed body of water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Zipper Lake. I caught it in Bemidji. <laughs> Lake I get Bemidji. That text message just My favorite off. is North of Bemidji. Well, all of Canada is North of Bemidji. <laughs> We're about, exactly. yeah, about an hour from Bemidji, I'd say. So, somewhere in there. So, 
There's about 800 lakes somewhere yeah. in that yeah. disclosed location. Small bodies back in the woods. Small yeah. bodies of water back in the woods. But it has I to be it. accessible by snowmobile or four-wheeler because yeah. I know you didn't walk to it. Mm-hmm. So somewhere in And there. we're protective of those lakes. We are. I th- I'm. You know what? The chances are that Will and I have fished the same lakes, but we'll never know because we'll never talk about it unless we run into each other on the lake. Mm-hmm. And then it'll be like this oh, long-distance yeah. thing like – who the hell is this dude? Uh-huh. Oh, he's coming this way. Put your stuff away, man. Put your stuff away. Yeah, friends <laughs> oh, camp. Okay, what? And then it's okay. We know each other. Then it's like, who told you this? Yeah, thing? yeah. Oh, who told uh, you? you know, and then you got to start going. Well, you got to go through the back catalog, or else you got to be like, no, dude, I I found it myself. Fishing. Are you sure? I think I think <laughs> you followed me out here. This is my so and so. Oh. No, no. And there's like a 15 minute conversation. Then by the end of it, you're just like, well. Let's and you were friends yeah. 30 minutes before that, and now all of a sudden you guys Someday like, I'm going to write a book about this. That whole... You're blocked on Facebook now. They can't see <laughs> all the photos that are blurred whole, out in the background. That whole, that whole thing that happens. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. We got a message on face, uh, Facebook, I believe. No, it was commented on one of our YouTube videos from episode one. It was either one or number three. I think it was three of this year, season mm-hmm. three. And the guy messaged on there, and he said, why does – I could actually probably pull it up. It said, why Why do you guys – or why do most shows when they're fishing, or most people like the, you guys, never say the body of water you're on unless you're fishing a big-name body? Mm-hmm. Oh. Question mark. And I just sat there for a second, and I actually would – I'd like to find it because I, I sat there for a second, and I was just like – dumbfounded about it mm-hmm. because to us it's it's a pretty obvious reason mm-hmm. why you don't let let's say if, you know last year we had over two million people watch our show you don't let two million three hundred thousand people know no, a about small that. body of water in a town like bemidji or faustin yeah. or brainerd i mean people in bemidji were thanking us for not releasing some of the lakes we've fished mm-hmm. or brainerd etc mm-hmm. because they don't want the overflux of people mm-hmm. to be, you know, destroying a lake. Because if half those people figure out about a 70, 80 acre lake, it's over. And come and keep their limits, it's done. It's toast. Yeah. There'll be so many holes in there, you can almost open water fish it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can almost open. Swiss cheesed. Big time. I've seen see it happen it. hundreds of times. And that, that, goes, that goes even prior to being on a show. Mm-hmm. That, you know, even if Will and I were to go fishing after this podcast where do you want to go and it's like oh, should we say um have you ever been to this lake mm-hmm. you know and it's mm-hmm. you start stepping around a little bit but it takes a while to get into that circle of trust mm-hmm. you know yeah i can't without a doubt i can't find it but i i wanted to pull it up because it's the to me the way i would answer that question is, is it's not the lake itself it's about what we're doing it's about mm-hmm. the fun it's about the little tips and tricks that we have for you, mm-hmm. um, you know, the the location at that time of the season, because that can all be applied to your favorite body of water, mm-hmm. you know. So it's really not not the lake itself. And yeah. then, like, you know, you get on Devils, Mille Lacs, Lake of the Woods. I mean, they're so huge. Mm-hmm. The bite is different everywhere. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. the, that's... Yeah, it. it the, I think we responded like something along the lines of, "You, we're giving you the tips and techniques to for you to and and show you obviously the fish we're catching, for you to go try this on your own mm-hmm. body of water. That's similar. It's not for you to. We're not a guide service yeah. for videos and showing you, you know, go hit this lake and destroy it. That's mm-hmm. not. Yeah. Speaking of tips and tricks, I got one for you when we get done with this podcast for your. For your bluegill jigging. I've been doing it for a couple of years. You'll like it. It works good. Right. It really helps you. It refines that fine movement. Mm-hmm. What are you guys talking about? Uh, just something to do a little tip and trick after. It's such a good one that I kind of, I'm, I'm not ready to like throw it all out there. I want to pass it on to certain dudes. Uh, tips and tricks that you can't say on the podcast. Mm. Not yet. Um, not yet. To, not yet. to be released So later. you work at a resort. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so what is and your what is, what is your main title there? 
Uh, Doc Boy. What is your Facebook title? <laughs> Sorry, <dude. laughs> there's got to be a better name. What is than your that. Facebook title? Uh, CEO of Harbor Operations. Yeah, at that's a little better. A there resort in yeah. northern Minnesota. We yeah. won't disclose the name of the resort, but I had to get you to say Doc Boy. CEO of Harbor <laughs> Operations, and I did want to want to know. Doc Boy is the pure <laughs> definition online, but on Facebook. It is a legit name that yep. you're, you're rocking there. Oh, what okay. is it like being on a big body of water, a little body of water, uh, a resort on a lake, and being the CEO of operations when you're – you said you guide once in a while out there? Oh, once in a while in the evenings and stuff. Do you stuff. help people clean fish? Oh, yeah. So what is it like being a resort guy, seeing the traffic of resorters, families, hardcore fishermen, fishermen, coming through from your dock – boy position um it's kind so of say a... doc man or doc boy doc, doc man boy doc <laughs> man boy <laughs> what, what is it like seeing it from your perspective from your summer job of being yeah. on it's, there? it's it's a real interesting experience i've been doing it for six years now oh wow and after so many times that's why he's the, ceo <laughs> right, right. the same people a lot of times the same people come back for the same week you know, over time they've come in, come in there 10, 15, 20, 20 plus years. And just having that, they're almost like family, you know, different families come in. You're just like, you connect with them and every week it's just something different. And a lot of times you get new people that come in and a lot of people that haven't fished the lake. And they always, you know, what are you, what are you doing? Where are you fishing? What do you, you know, how do you get them? So it's the number could, one question for people. Yeah, it's the number they're, one thing. Especially if they're not new. Mm-hmm. Or they are new, I mean. They're like, tell us the spots. Yeah. So you give them, you know, you give them the spots. They go and try it. And if they don't get it, then, you you know, what are you doing? This is what you need to be doing, you know. What's your techniques? What's, what's your bait? Yeah, how are you working? How are you working this bait? How, well, how deep are you? You know, what time of day are you going out? Because I know? want everyone to know that goes to a resort the main mission of the people that work at the resort is to not give you false areas yeah. to fish. They want you to succeed and be happy and come yeah. back. So obviously, you're you're obviously telling them legit spots mm-hmm. to fish. And you know, what is it like being able to kind of I guess see it from the first hand of like the resort resorters, the tourism industry of being I don't know, you're you're the leader when someone comes to you that's a guest. Mm-hmm. And, but you don't actually go on the boat, right? Or once in a while? Uh, sometimes in the evening. Like a lot of times if I do guide, I'll take them out in my boat or I'll go in their boat one or two and just go fishing, you know. I'll give them, you know, this is a couple spots where I've caught them, you know, this time of year, this time of, you know, the weather's like this. This is right here, winds over, winds from the north, going here, winds from the south, it's going here. And they kind of, you know, just give them stuff to learn to go out and find them themselves. A good jumping off point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and cool. Give them a couple yeah. spots to base it mm-hmm. off of and then. And then work from there. Did you have any questions for Big Will? Uh, my first introduction to Big Will, though, I, I'll tell that story. Tell it. It was on it. Facebook, and it wasn't a message. It was a video. I'm watching this video, and uh, you were living with some bass dudes, mm-hmm. and they were trying to explain, was it rat, Wacky Riggin? Uh, they were Ned Riggin. Ned Riggin. Riggin. <laughs> you, gotta, you should look that video up. It's pretty funny. <laughs> So they're like, oh, no, no, you use the mushroom head jig. And you're like, oh, does it look like this? He kept drawing around round ball head jig. <laughs> but where does the crawler go? No, you don't use a night crawler. You use this plastic. Well, why don't you use a night crawler? <laughs> Stuff like that. It was just hilarious. Uh, I watched the thing like eight the times. The only video I can possibly think of for Will is, you remember when that app came out called like Smash Dub? You know what I'm talking about. Oh, Dub you know, Smash, Dub Smash, something Dub like Smash, that. Dub Smash, yep. Where you, it played mu- it played a talking or a music or a scene from a show or a movie, and you just opened your mouth, and then the, yep. the words fit through your yep. thing. And there's a shot of you like laying in bed with your shirt off, and it came on. And it, that was my uh, that's my will video right there. And trust me, people, it's out on the internet. You can find it. Okay, so the. Literally, um, and I was just out with you last night, right? We went out to eat, and you saw the comments firsthand. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was the day before. You saw the comments firsthand. Every single week, we get people asking us about the KFC buffet from episode three. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Every single week, we get someone that brings it up, something. You saw it coming fresh out the 
someone just posted it and I showed it to you. Mm-hmm. They're like, that's my favorite part is the the KFC buffet. You guys, they, someone even said like, you guys need to do a documentary just on that buffet. <laughs> <laughs> Will on the buffets. And you guys should do an episode just on Wait. him at the buffets. Uh, and I, I'm oh like, blown up. so what is it like being? Because uh, this year you were recently added to the Fish Addiction mm-hmm. staff. And Which is an awesome addition. An awesome addition. And um, you got to be on a couple episodes. We're planning on going on mm-hmm. another trip here soon. What What is it like being part of, of, you know, at the beginning of this, you talked about one mm-hmm. of the things you wanted to do was be in the fishing TV show. So mm-hmm. what is it like being part of a family of, you know, fishermen, fisherwomen, uh, TV show? What What is that like for you? And to be able to come on shoots as a college kid, you're... You know, you're like, oh, I'm not mm-hmm. going to go to class today. I'm going to go on the shoot, you yeah. know. Or there's been times where it's like, I got a test. I can't go. And we're mm-hmm. proud of you for not skipping out on that stuff. But And then we're going to get into that KFC thing. But tell me a little bit about Fish Addictions TV and, and you. Well, the thing is, a lot of 21-year-olds don't get a chance to, you know, be on a show, get sure. to fish with all these awesome guys and girls, and get to go on all these trips, you know. And when I first joined, I was kind of like, oh, you know, are these guys going to like me, you know, and everything. And after the first couple times meeting them, it was just like instant, like, oh, yeah, we're like brothers now. And just mm-hmm. having a ball and just sharing stories and it's fun group, catching fish. It's 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 awesome. I love it. I mean, we say it all the time how we're like family, so we're not going to obviously repeat that stuff again. But, I mean, that, that's what it is. And I still remember that first episode where you were with and – you were pumped, but you can't from from my perspective, you can't quite get his emotions. Like no. he's like, Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. But like right now you're like, I I'm excited. I'm like, I can tell you're really happy and excited to be a part Dude, of it. But he's at the will. same he's time, just chill, man. Yeah, he's just super chill. The only time I ever get like see him get really excited is Bluegills and KFC Buffets. <laughs> <laughs> so episode three of Fish Addictions TV this year. <laughs> You um, you kind of have that personality of the comedian of the group, or you bring that little personality flair of the funniness. And if anyone hasn't seen this episode, you you kind of brought because when I'm sitting there filming, I'm always looking for people to bring that new spin to that. I caught this fish, and I'm going to say something. Well, how are you going to say it? Mm-hmm. Are you going to just say it like this, or are you going to say it with something you mm-hmm. know bonus to it? And then you know we were all sitting there catching fish and you you said that comment that the only thing that gets you more fired up than big blue girls like this is kfc buffets and we all just started laughing and on our facebook when we released the episode we said what's your favorite part of the episode what's for and it was just kfc buffets big will kfc buffets kfc buffets <laughs> we need to do a parody or something at a kfc buffet with you just for fun mm-hmm. and incorporated in, I think, because that was like the number one hit of that episode. Forget that there's big bluegills. <laughs> he likes there's KFC, KFC buffets. Buffet. I do too. Like, what? So that's. Maybe that's, we should get the Colonel on for an episode. The Colonel. Him and Will sitting in the Grizzly. That would be With hilarious. a 20 piece bucket. Yeah. You <laughs> almost can do it with the beard action. Get, I just shaved bluegill. that thing off. It's not coming back. <laughs> It's not coming. <laughs> I thought your daughter was supposed to shave it off. I, Are you gonna pull one of those? I'll put by a glue the time on she one. She sees on. it. She'll it'll I'll be put full a fake again. One on. Be like, there it is. You Hold uh, on. you also got someone in episode three with the old uh, <laughs> the, 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 yeah. The, what is it called? The finger this, game the or circle. whatever. You yeah, just got him this from over here. Below. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. The old twenty some <laughs> twenty some. Your like, old prank, yeah. You see the sixteen <laughs> to twenty thousand people you got with that, and then yeah. not including, the, of course, the yeah. TV. But but time it era, it already ran its course. Mm-hmm. You know, the internet yeah, like life is like like ninety seconds, ninety seconds to two weeks. That's it. That's mm-hmm. the life of anything good. Do you see that video of that kid, the ball boy at the soccer game? The ball rolls over to him in the middle of the stadium, and he drops down to the ground, <laughs> drops it. Oh my <laughs> on, god! On European television, <laughs> millions of people. <laughs> You know, kind of like, uh, you know, the internet went through the whole Rick Rollin thing for a long time. Oh, yeah. You know? I'm glad that's over with. That was a, <laughs> that was terrible. That was that terrible. That was a mess. <laughs> Every video you clicked on, you're just... Never I think you were filming you somebody, up. though, on episode gonna three. Never you down. I was fishing in front of Will. Will was right behind me, and I got a pretty decent bluegill, and I set the hook, and I just stand up. Oh, I, just, I remember that. Yeah, he's just like... 
walking away, and he's, he's, he kept going, what do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Walk by, and I just kind of give him a little, like, a little flash, no excitement, boop, down the hole, and he was like, what was that all about? <laughs> Where was the excitement? What was it? <sighs> ah, you got to play it up sometimes. You got to play it up. So what... You're on. You're on the podcast. Finally, you did the, the after the bite episode, mm-hmm. you know whatever that was. Um, is there anything you want to? We've never actually yeah. asked the Any person guest. in the hot seat. What do you want yeah, to talk, talk about? Talk to us about some. <laughs> do you have anything to talk about? Have anything or any to techniques talk about. or tips that you want to drop for um, for anyone? Otherwise, you should come up with a couple. Uh, no. Those things. What things? Star Wars, Star Trek, those deals that we oh, do yeah, once in a while. I, I can do that at, at a you know, moment's notice. It's not a big deal. Yeah, he's got them wrapped up in his brain. One of the biggest things that I like to do is whether it's open water or ice fishing. If I'm fishing walleyes, I love using braid. It's probably my favorite line to use. And even if you're fishing like Malax or you're fishing like Erie, like a clear water lake, you can still get away with using braid but just put like a – anywhere from four to six foot floral leader on because you're still going to have that great sensitivity and you're going to be able to get a better hook set and drive that hook home better than if you're using like straight mono especially if you're fishing deep water so if you're fishing like you know 20 to 30 feet and you have that much stretching line you're going to and if you set the hook not as good you're not going to get a good hook set but if you have that much less and have straight braid with no stretch you're going to get a much better hook set and you're not going to lose that fish Right on. That's so that would probably be my biggest tip. Tip of the podcast. Tip of the podcast. Brought to you by KFC we'll call Buffets. That just the <laughs> Can we call that section just the tip? Just the tip. <laughs> and just <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, uh, Anywho, uh, do you have any questions for us? Do you have any questions about the broken line? Questions about the broken line. Because besides that, he's going to hit you with the, the, the shotgun fire, and then we'll finish her off. So, I mean, you guys have a lot of big names on here. You oh, know. it's a, it's going to get bigger. Who is Man. the biggest so far? Because we've been talking with a couple big don't, big players. Don't you dare in. say his name. <laughs> he already is begging to come back on. Who's that? No. Don't say it. Don't give him a hint. <laughs> don't even give him a hint? You have a photo of him on your Facebook page. <laughs> He's got four thousand people on there. Yeah. No, um, in his personal photo collection. Is it Rylander? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> people, <laughs> did, did he send you a screenshot from a, one comment? Yeah. <laughs> one one person <laughs> loved him and was like, "They oh, want me back. They want me back on the broken line. We gotta get back on there." <laughs> one like, comment. Ugh. We're yeah. like, "Yeah, we'll get you back in there. We'll yeah. get you back in there." But yeah, what? I mean, we we definitely have some uh, five or six. I would say bigger people mm-hmm. that are in the works of possibly coming. Mm-hmm. It's a hard time of the year with the with the show right now for filming. So yeah. we just broke last week, uh, last podcast last week that we're going to start the broken spatula, spatula, and you may be interested in that because you're mm. here for a good time, not a long time. Oh yeah, absolutely. So the broken spatula is basically going to be our YouTube version playoff spin of two dudes that cook. We're going to make Ooh. stuff, dude. Yeah, we have. Some we're gonna crock pot. Recipes. We're gonna egg roll wrap. We're gonna. Ooh, so we're excited dude. to get into that like it's real be soon. Awesome. Ooh. So uh, the broken spatula is. I was thinking of recipes today. I I shared a couple things on Facebook just to be like, oh, I'm spin. I'm doing a spin off of that. There was like one mac and cheese thing. It was like six different kinds of mac and cheese starters, and I was like, I'm doing a spin off of that for the broken spatula. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many so many good things and. You're going to have to listen to that last podcast to kind of get an idea of what we're going mm-hmm. in that direction. But we are going to have guests, meaning you can come taste the food. Official taste tester. The official taste tester of the broken <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> You could be on every episode. Yeah. Just have Will just sitting there waiting. <laughs> yeah, he's sitting there <laughs> waiting. He's got a, a lobster bib, yeah. plastic lobster bib and a knife in the fork. <laughs> I'm going to look for one on Amazon. Hopefully you can find one. A the one. claws, they're plastic, and they just like click, click. <laughs> you could figure out about getting a custom one made. Could do that. A broken Ooh, spatula yeah. bib. Like a baby bib. Oh, for the, an adult? Oh, yeah. That would be hilarious. We can go all out and get an adult-sized high chair. 
<laughs> no, that's kind of that's degrading. Yeah, we don't want to. <laughs> but it'd make still it be fun as hell, though. <laughs> it would be funny. Yeah. So we also have a a cheese witch uh, video that we're not going to tell you about, but we're going to do a cheese witch video, and let's just say it's going to be awesome, dude. Yeah, it's going to be good. There's your hint. But yeah, why don't you hit off some fire things, and we'll do we'll we'll wrap her up and okay. And you ready? It. Yep. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. <laughs> we were just. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one I had. Thanks for saving me, buddy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We were just at breakfast. We were eating when we were watching the last Fish Addictions episode. He looks through the whole menu and he's like, "How does a place that serves breakfast not have any damn pancakes?" <laughs> they didn't have pancakes. Yet? They had I don't waffles. Know. But not pancakes. Didn't have pancakes. Huh. I was yeah. dumbfounded. I, well, I just asked because I had pancakes pancake. for supper. So, pancakes pancakes sound eggs. good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Star Trek, Star Wars. Uh, s- Star Trek. <laughs> good thing we have this up Well, here. we're two for like whatever, how many guests <laughs> we've had. Two for 18 or something. Yeah. Unreal. Two-man wolf pack there. Yep. Two-man wolf pack. Um... Fruit dinos or fruity pebbles? Fruit pebbles. Because you've never even heard of fruit dinos. No, it's the they're off the brand of fruity pebbles. <laughs> yeah, but they're not. yeah, they they're good though. They're legit. You got to yeah. put those. Actually, no, I have. We got used to get the big bag. Oh, yeah. It comes in a huge bag of fruity dinos. Pro waffle tip: If you make your own waffles, no, you don't. You make pancakes. What did you say? Waffles pan- or pancakes? Pancakes. Well, you you can even do it in your pancakes. You take mm-hmm. a handful of those fruity pebbles. Ooh, throw them in the batter. Ooh. Boom, done. I've done it with waffles, too. Um, Pancakes with fruity pebbles, and it sounds pretty dino yeah, There's your food wrong, tip man. for the week. Right or left-handed? Uh, right-handed. What do you think about people that are left-handed? Uh, they're the devil. They're the wow. devil. And Jeez, uh Christmas, <laughs> Watch out for this guy. Um, 2% or 1? Uh, 1%. Or skin. That's not even milk. Dude, skim milk isn't even milk. It's water. Drink a lot of skim milk in 1%. Um, it's, it's a Hanover cure. There's water in it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, what do you think of our painting back there behind you? I was thinking of the same exact question. That's life right there, bud. Yeah, yep. that is the Broken Line Just podcast wrapped up into one trying to velvet-looking p- painting. Oh. Yep. That's the internet coming at you. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, hey, whoa, easy, yeah, guys. It's the internet easy. coming at you when you're holding up two bluegills. It's uh, a great Absolutely. example of the internet right there. <laughs> What's your uh, favorite, um, I'm trying to think of Debbie snacks. What? Little Debbie snacks. Probably be zebra cakes. Zebra cakes. But they've got to be one. frozen, dude. Cold, not frozen. Cold. No, frozen. Try them frozen. Whole <laughs> different taste. Yeah, because they're, like yeah, they're frozen. <laughs> Seriously, do it. Just do it. Do it. Okay, do it. I will. Okay. Did anyone if notice that? Uh, what's the golden? The Debbie snacks, the golden logs, whatever they were called. <laughs> golden logs. Yeah, the ultimate little Debbie snack. Oh, is it like the, the ones that disappeared and then they came back and they were not the same? They are like the uh, cream. Yeah, with the something? cream on the inside. Yeah. Why? Why can't we think of this? I don't know. The two golden... Oh, Boston cream something. No, be. Was not that? even close. No? Them are good, too. The I... the two little <laughs> golden, fluffy, yellow cream on the inside, white cream. Those Twinkies? aren't little Debbie. Those are Twinkies. Twinkies. Yeah, those are Twinkies. Hostess. Man. Hostess. That's what I was Hostess Twinkies. Wow. Hostess. <laughs> You remember when? Wait, when that's why it was throwing me off. Yeah, yeah. It was throwing you off. Whole yeah. different, whole you different. Said host is, uh, I'll go into a different category. Yeah. I know all of them. I just got to get in the right category. Jeez, Louise. Okay, <laughs> I met. Okay, hostess. What? They disappeared when they came back. They were nothing like they were right. when they disappeared. They had to take the formaldehyde out of the sponge cake. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah, got busted. Now they actually mold up after four like years. Like you posting. Mm-hmm. Hey, Taco Bell's actually healthy. And that one dude's like, no, man, that sounds like cat food. Cat one food isn't below, bad for you. It's one salty. One step below cat food, he said. Yeah. <laughs> it was a delish post on Facebook, and I shared it, and I was like, look at this, Patrick. Yeah. Taco Bell's actually a healthy fast food restaurant, in a sense. I mean, a taco, meat, it's lettuce. It's the healthiest you know? of fast Is it? foods. Yeah. yeah. After that whole meat debacle good, where they're man. like, yeah, it's 47% beef. What's the other person? Uh, can't really tell you. Hmm. Then they brought in this like high performance chef that just like pew, silently cleaned everything up, 
and uh yeah, meaning they paid the the, the fines mm-hmm. and the lawyer fees right. and they're good to I'll go still buy a five dollar box i still love taco bell oh yeah have you had their breakfast yep it's amazing a, isn't it there's another thing too is we last podcast we talked about the diet and you're on a diet too mm-hmm I haven't had like McDonald's, any fast food, and we sound over like a, a month. <laughs> like a diuretic the- yeah. uh, therapy group. Just going, <laughs> man. You remember these snack cakes? I sure do. <laughs> oh man, I could really help. Five dollar box. <laughs> I could really go for a five dollar box with a Twinkie. A Twinkie from eight years ago, by the way. <laughs> you know what? If you found a Twinkie that was eight years old, it would be still fresh. Be yeah, still be good. Like a fifty-seven year shelf life or something like I'm that. Freaking real. Well, this podcast was definitely a little bit shorter one because you're a college kid. There's not a whole... I mean, there's definitely an aspect of your mm-hmm. life that we, we definitely got out of this and talked about some awesome um, awesome random stuff, the mm-hmm. random goodness, which we always drop in every every podcast. Um, but don't forget social media-wise. Did you bring something to give away or no? You know, we give all no, the dude, guests he, he give something away. He came here and give away some knowledge. Is that what it was? Knowledge? Sure. <laughs> He's going to give away a packet of Hostess. Twinkies. Sure. Yeah, he can swing that. I'm He's gonna dig for to loose get... change in the truck. Go find. <laughs> we got a lot of <laughs> we got a lot of random giveaway stuff that's yeah. on the. We, we got always... some more thirteen stuff. Some more. Um, I actually still do have some bandanas, broken line bandanas. Let's give away these GoPro batteries. Nope, we're not giving them away. <laughs> we still have um, ice strong stuff to give away. So we still got a bunch of giveaways, not including yeah. you know the guests that come through. Uh, don't forget Facebook. You know, the whole works Instagram and should I say Instagram first next time? Yeah. Yeah. Instagram and if Facebook. you want Facebook. Uh message us Broken Line Podcast. Give us some grip and grin. Send us your message. It was awesome chilling with you. Mm-hmm. Even though Same. chill with you like a couple times a week. And we'll we'll see you on the broken spatula. Knowledge. Yeah. Like a lot, dude. It's yeah. gonna be fun. We need to bring you on the broken spatula. We were talking about breaking a spatula and putting up here and putting a wood frame around it mm-hmm. and then sending our video to uh, Gordon Ramsay Ooh, so he yeah. can respond with, your show's shit. And then we could like get Gordon <laughs> yeah. Ramsay says our show's shit. <laughs> like that would be... You never know, dude. The internet's a weird place. He might be like, all right, I'm going to come there firsthand. Yeah, he's going to come. You have a resort on a lake? Yeah. I'm going to oh, bring my family shit. and I'm going to be in your show. And all of a sudden, holy fuck, what's happening? Gordon Ramsay's here. We're you ever watch those? He's calling my food shit. Yes. You ever watch those videos <laughs> where Gordon um, uh, Gordon Ramsay responds to him on Twitter? Oh and yeah. And they have that that guy reads them out loud, <laughs> and it's like a high pitched voice. Yep. And he oh, starts laughing and giggling. <laughs> uh, what do you think of my eggs? Your eggs look like cat food. <laughs> like, they just say the most random stuff. Oh, it's absolutely it's awesome. hilarious. Gordon Ramsay, I watch like Hotel Hell, all of his shows, mm-hmm. and. I freaking love them, man. And that's we were talking about the eggs the other day and how to make yeah, the perfect know, scrambled eggs. And oh my god, just his videos and just seeing how to make stuff. And of course, like what's that show where he yells at everyone? Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. God, he is. Oh, he is awesome. He is a freaking. So yeah, if he could come on the show, uh, yeah. Gordon Ramsay, if you're out there, come on to our show. Yeah. So this we got a hashtag Gordon Ra- Gordon Ramsay keywords. Oh, on, yeah, when we do when we set up the. Instagram for uh, Broken Spatula. Everyone will be a Gordon Ramsay hashtag. Mm-hmm. So to the Gordon point, we'll Ramsay. get kicked off that because they're starting to do that now on yeah. uh, Instagram. Something about people using the same hashtags too many times. Mm-hmm. and I don't know. Something that I read. Anyway. Just stupid stuff. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you, you uh, Thanks, Will. stopping yeah, out. Thanks. And, yeah, you got to come on the Broken Spatula with us. Um, I'm not going to plug all the all the social media. It's already out there. You got it. We got to turn you, this off so I can give them that really cool. Do you remember thing. the ending? You've watched enough of this to know how we do the ending. Well, here comes the truth. Kind of. Where I say I'm Aaron. Oh, no, I don't remember the rest. You, you say, say Aaron. I'm Will. Oh, you say Aaron. <laughs> say I'm Aaron. Wait, I'm Aaron. I'm Will. No, I'm Patrick. And I'm Will. And I'm. Aaron <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> and I'm Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> and you just listened to <laughs> uh, with that. <laughs> Sweet. I forgot what we were doing. Right, anyway. Start from the beginning. All right. Who are you? I'm Will. I'm Aaron. I'm Patrick. And this is The Broken Line. He wow. fucking stole my part. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I said the other word. <laughs> Thank you. Or listening to Broken Wine Podcast. Don't forget, 
to follow us on all our social media. Like, share, comment, and subscribe.